Hello, how's it going? In today's video, I'm covering Dragons of Nightmare and the Lower of Blood from Chronicle Volume 3. So let's go! In Kalimdor, Fandral Staghelm was having a bit of a hard time. He was trying to stop the other Night Elves from noticing the corruption spreading from Teldrassil. But the Emerald Nightmare was beginning to pop up in all sorts of places across Azeroth. Druids were the first to notice, but they had no idea where it was coming from and Fandral had no choice but to allow the Cenarian Circle to fight against the Nightmare. Otherwise, they might have become a little bit suspicious of him. So the Cenarian Circle started investigating, which took them all over the place. One of the first places where they made any real progress was the Wailing Caverns, an underground cave system located in the Northern Barrens. Some druids went down there and then didn't come back up again. Some of them were trapped, whilst others had been corrupted. And since this was pretty close to the Horde's capital, Orgrimmar, they mounted a rescue mission. This is a dungeon, but I've decided not to go into as much detail about dungeon tactics, because that Diamore video was a complete ball ache. Horde champions made their way through the cave system, defeating the various weird twats that dwelled within. They came across a Tauren druid called Muyo, who initially tasked them with defeating the four druids of the Fang. So they did that. They then escorted Muyo to Dreamer's Rock, at the heart of the caverns, and protected him as he performed a ritual to try and rescue one of his druid mates, called Narelex, who was having a little sleep. During this ritual, a frickin' massive murloc appeared called Mutanus the Devourer. This was actually a manifestation of Narelex's nightmare, so basically it's like a stay puffed murloc. Eventually, the Horde champions defeated Mutanus. Narelex woke up, thanked the champions, and then turned into an owl and flew away. And Muyo also flew away, but he didn't transform into anything. It looked really weird, and from that day forth, he would forevermore be known as Hover Cow. Ground control to Hover Cow. Get down from there, you're just a cow. Meanwhile, more terrifying dangers were emerging elsewhere. An old threat was back. As a little recap, over a thousand years ago, Ysera and her green dragonflight had fought against the Atali trolls. They worshipped Hakar, the Lower of Blood. Not to be confused with Gahoon, the Lower of Blood. Anyway, the Atali had summoned Hakar, and it had become pretty obvious that the Dark God had an insatiable appetite for blood. So Asira and her mates sunk the Atali Temple. This took place in the Swamp of Sorrows, and Green Dragons had watched over this sunken temple ever since. Unfortunately, these Green Guardians didn't realise they were being subtly affected by the Emerald Nightmare. And when some descendants of the Troll Fanatics made their way back to the temple, they saw that the dragons were vulnerable and a little bit confused. The Trolls regained control of the temple and began gruesome rituals to summon Hakar back to Azeroth. Again. A Green Dragon called Itharius called the Cenarian Circle for help and they sent some Alliance champions this time. Bloody hell, the Alliance are actually credited with doing something in vanilla for a change. They fought their way through the Sunken Temple, killing a whole bunch of corrupted dragons and trolls and stuff. Eventually, they had to fight against a former consort of Isera called Aranicus, or his ghost anyway. They took him out and put a stop to the rituals. They could have totally fought the avatar of Hakar, but it's an optional boss and they couldn't be bothered. The ripple effects of the Emerald Nightmare had only just begun. Green dragons across Azeroth became corrupted murdering innocents by the hundreds, indiscriminately. There was no way to save these dragons, so many of them were killed. The Cenarian Circle were a little bit upset by this, but they knew it had to be done, and they weren't going to let emotions get in the way. The Green Dragon Flight themselves would be haunted by this moment for many years. Elsewhere, the Zandalari Trolls found out about the attempt to summon Hakar, and they were like, You what, mate? They saw themselves as spiritual leaders of the entire troll race, and believed the Lower of Blood's return would herald a dark time for their people. Side note, Although they were wrong about which Lower of Blood it would be, I guess they were correct. They were pleased to hear that the Atali had been defeated in the Sunken Temple, but then they were immediately not pleased, because it turned out some of the Atali had survived. These dicks just don't give up, do they? They'd quietly infiltrated the capital of the Gurubashi Trolls, Zolgarub. They also somehow managed to enslave the minds of many of the Gurubashi's most powerful priests. And guess what? They were trying to summon Hakar again, for like the fourth bloody time. Initially, some trolls from Zandalar and nearby regions within the Eastern Kingdoms tried to put a stop to this, but they failed. They just got captured and enslaved as well, which meant the Atali and their leader, Jindo the Hexer, were now even more powerful. So, good job, those guys. The Zandalari realised they didn't have the resources to do anything about this threat, so they sent word to the Darkspear trolls to do something instead. Maybe the Horde could put a stop to this. So Vol'jin informed Thrall, and the Warchief ordered a large strike force to respond to the threat. Upon entering the capital, the Horde Champions fought against a Zandalari High Priestess called Jeklik. She'd been sent by King Rastakhan, but ended up just getting enslaved, like an idiot. Interesting fact about her, 
She was a high priestess of the primal jungle god Hyreek, the bat, the one in Nazmir. Good times. Anyway, they killed her pretty easily, to be honest. No need for a strategy guide. Next boss was another high priest called Venoxus. He represented the snake god, Hethys. He had four snake mates, but the champions just crowd controlled them for the entire fight. Every now and then, Venoxus would spaz out and cast Holy Wrath, which is a spell that jumps from person to person, with damage increasing exponentially. But it really only sucked for the melee DPS. Everyone else was more than 10 feet away, so they didn't get hit by it. After a while, he transformed into a snake and started using a Poison Cloud AoE ability. But this group knew what it was doing. They avoided standing in the Poison Cloud. Except that guy. He stood in it and died. Eventually, Phenoxis fell. Let's move on. Screw the optional boss. Next up was High Priestess Marie of the Spider Lower, Shadra. There's a more complicated way of doing this, but the off tank focused on the speaker, whilst the main tank attacked Marie herself. Every now and then some spiders would appear, and the DPS would AoE those guys to death as soon as possible, otherwise they'd get bigger and cause a wipe. Marie sometimes tried to use life drain, but someone would kick her or bash her with a shield and she'd lose her train of thought. Blah blah, she turned into a spider. Blah blah, she did. I hope people aren't expecting me to do actual raid strategy guides, because sod that. After her, they fought High Priest Thekel of the Tiger God, Shavala. He was accompanied by a shaman, a rogue, and some tigers. And it was important to make sure they died at the same time, or else they'd just respawn. But once the champions did that, Phase 2 started, and Thekel turned into a tiger himself. Every now and then, he'd spawn some elite tiger mates, who once again, needed to be killed as soon as possible. Because they could kill a healer in like two hits. But other than that, it was straightforward and he died. Next up, one of the champions was like, ooh, a gong. So they rang it, obviously, and Arlok appeared, High Priestess of Bethek, the panther. And she was like, ew, the f***ing hell rang my gong. And do you know what? I'm bored of these priests and priestesses, so she died, whatevs. Finally, the champions had reached the leader of the Atali, Jindo the Hexer. He spawned all sorts of different trash, little shades of himself, healing wards, brainwashing totems, and the whole point of this fight was to basically prioritise killing all of that trash in that order. So the champions did that, and it was great. Unfortunately, Jindo's death came too late to stop Hakar from entering the world, which isn't surprising really, because it's taken bloody ages just to summarise what happened. As Hakar manifested, he poisoned the blood of some of the champions and tried to drag them into madness. However, it was Hakar's lust for power that ultimately ended him, because all of the Horde champions allowed themselves to get their blood poisoned, and then when Hakar tried to feed on them, the blood was poisoned. He didn't even notice. He was too busy licking his lips. Bloody idiot. So Hakar succumbed to his own dark magic and poison. And with that, the Horde were victorious. They'd taken back Zolgarub and also they'd saved Azeroth for the bloody third time or something. And we're leaving it there. In the next Volume 3 video, we're back with Cho Ghul as he meets C'Thun. And then both the Horde and Alliance are going to work together in Ankaraj, which is a bit weird. As always, thanks very much to those of you who support the channel as patrons. If anyone would like to support the channel in that way, links in the description, and there's a link to the Discord server in there as well. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, all of that bollocks, and all that's left to say is, thanks for watching, and see ya!